Hello there everyone and welcome to the start of a new campaign in Old World Blues, A to Z series, in which we're playing as the Enclave again. Now I've already played as the Enclave in the Old World Blues A to Z series I've been doing on my channel, but I wanted to do them again just because, well, it's been a while since I played them, since at the time of this recording, and I eventually would like to go down, once again, the path of us just being purists. 100% purists. Now, I'm going to make some mistakes along the way, so please correct me when I make mistakes. But, in the meantime, if you'd like to read about in the Lair of the Bear, please go right ahead. Our time will come soon. Actually, we're going to wait for that one. But we're going to talk about hard mode. There are many in the Enclave who desire a challenge. And America is never one to back down from adversity, from Valley Forge to D-Day to the reclamation of Alaska. The satisfaction, the payoff, the sense of accomplishment. It's what it truly means to be American. Others prefer to remind the way some that fancy rifles, false gods, and football padding don't do well against an Enclave soldier and power armor. Question is, which one are you? I want pain? No, I'm good. I kind of like power trips. It's a Nevada run. Yeah, it's a thing. No, I want a challenge. Super hard mode. Sometimes some campaigns just really make me angry. So I'm just gonna. I like power trips. But if you wonder about in the later Baron, like I said, please go right ahead. We're gonna leave that one there. I would play 4.0 and the uh, last bastion of freedom. When the rig was destroyed, the last hope of America had laid at Navarro, and the brother and the NCR saw to it that the American dream was to be snuffed out. With many staying on edge of despair, the toughest soldier of the Enclave, Sergeant Major Dornan, rallied what few troops he could muster in. A lot of way out with power armor. Escaped using bird birds. Ooh, I like that one. Escaped before the fighting got bad. No, we're definitely not doing that one. Fought, fought a way out. We are going to be heroic here no matter what. Ooh, I forgot I set this up too, didn't I? Um, oh, we can't. Oh, we're going to actually lose it. Darn it. Oh, let's go do that one anyways. Of course, many thought the fall of Navarro was the end of the Enclave, the end of the American dream, but as with the Great War, the role we discover is not so easy to defeat America, and not by a long shot. All soldiers never die. Much like in the Enclave, Dornan tried to hide and integrate after the fall of Navarro. He took it to dis a disguise in Vault City, becoming infamous among those who threatened the peace and quiet of Vault City. That was until one day the NCR Rangers uh, arrived. Three more divisions of 20 count with power armor. Yes, please. Um... Sons and daughters of liberty, the veterans of Enclave are old and aging, yet there's a new generation of Enclave who are ready to take up the flag and defend America, followed with calling all Enclave. We can use the old radio broadcast equipment around the depot to send our signal, alerting other Enclave survivors to our presence. For years, Dornan, under the name Chad Ran, or hid among Vault City, secured. Many of them his old units settled there as well, growing the population considerably for a time. It was peaceful, though by no means idyllic. Word out of the NCR saw rangers and military police rounding up former Enclave citizens, who tried to also integrate. During one caravan security run to Sac City, Dornan watched as a mother and father were hanging for their association with the Enclave. Not even the children were spared. It took every ounce of discipline to not open fire right then and there. Vault City bureaucracy kept the NCR bay. But that was only for so long. Then one night, there was a knock at the old sergeant's door, and he was greeted by the steely eyes of the NCR Rangers. They came looking for him and spoke to him by name. There was an intense fight, but by the end of it, there were two dead NCR Rangers, and Dornan knew his time was up. Never send morons. They came for him, they'll come for the rest. So where did I put my power armor? Oh, oh. Command power, eh, that's alright. Uh, political power is nice, but I gotta go with that one. At the height of the Enclave's power, Dornan had the distinct privilege of leading his own unit, something unheard of being uh, since he was a non commissioned officer. However, Dornan's Rangers ranked aside the Devil's Brigade and Grand Company in terms of effectiveness. When Navarro fell, they of course rallied behind the most feared and respected men in the Enclave, yet, as time wore on and the dream of America flickered out, they moved on, though many settled in Vault City. When Dornan arrived at the house of his second in command, bloody fist bloody from the encounter, they all knew well they were no longer safe. The two went door to door knowing the hour was coming. That night saw an exodus, Dornan doing his last act as Chad Ranor to get him through. They made their way to an abandoned pre-war base off near new, near new Reno. It was long abandoned, but then few actually knew of the exact location, but Dornan did. As the family settled into pre-war bases, only one thing was on their mind, they were ready for revenge. They wanted a future for their children. Uh, this seems like the one I would choose. I'm going to go with this one. As we do a letter of the bear, and they never let the old flag fall. Allow the Continental Army of Valley Forge, we will not give up, we will not vanish into the wind, and we will never let America fall. We'll come back, we'll win, and America will never fall. Sergeant uh, Major Arch Dornan, 2275. A new generation of Americans, Sam however, had marched on. Dornan's cropped black hair turned silver white, and even his best officers grew weary with age. Yet, among the numbers were not a series of old enclave, but a new generation, sired by the enclave of old. Many were taught the basics of survival, others taught how to be soldiers. Many of the older ones here tonight were rangers, and they had taught their children well. They come at age of being taught of the enclave of America and their heritage. Dornan thought back to the child hanging beside his parents, then looked at the families huddling around the center of the depot. Even if a few said the enclave was dead, or the American dream was gone, they weren't going to give up. Not this time. For the enclave's future. For their America's future. Well, right now we have ruler, and we're going to go purist, so we've got to go elite. Intellectuals? Mm. Yeah, I think we chose the right one here. Better call Sal. Ooh, I like stability, though. 
This is still the United States. By God, quit crime. Our choice. Sergeant Dorn is well respected by both the Reformer and Purist factions within the Enclave. The Enclave needs a president, though. And the Sarge expressed his interest in being called to serve for the rest of his career. He works for a living, gosh darn it. Using old codes and working endlessly to get the radio running, the refugees from Vault City began broadcasting from afar. The encrypted channel would be hidden uh, from the prying ears from, like, from the likes of the NCR, and secured from those who knew how... Who knew how like the Brotherhood? Soon, others begin arriving, some from the north, east, and a few out from California. A month in, a series of vertebrates arrived, having come from Bloomfield Space Center in California. Among them uh, was Franklin Anderson, a well-respected scientist in his time, and a brilliant orator who managed to rally many within the depot of the old purest cause, while others chafed under the words. No one could argue play to the uncle's desire for revenge. Not long after, a separate group arrived from Oregon, a famous mercenary war band known as Granite Company, who historically was one of the greatest units in the Enclave. While Granite Senior passed away not long ago, his son Douglas Granite had taken over where Anderson made fiery retorts of vengeance for the purity of America. Granite made impassioned speeches to counter talking about reform and a new beginning. Night after night, this continued, and soon came to head when it was suggested that the Depot hold a vote. A scientist, politician, and a mercenary war hero. Interesting. Things really got busy around here. Oh, yeah, we gotta hide ourselves, huh? No, oh, since you got it, might as well spend it. Why not? Happy February, everybody. We have a couple of white tea here to keep us nice and warm. Better call Sal. New Reno is run by crime lords. However, Dornan remembers reports of working with one family to acquire chems for research on the rig. They can still be of use to us, if only for a while. Despite all that's happened in the last few months, the Enclave Remnants are scattered far and across the American continent. From MacArthur to Chicago to possibly even Texas and beyond, Dornan came to see her at Army Depot for a reason. To establish and create a stable base far from prying eyes and prepare for the future. Now that what he has, and what Anderson and Granite have, they can accomplish just that. It'll be hard, difficult, but that never stopped America before. A miracle will rise, a miracle will go on. The rug may have gone down, and families hunted like rats in the sewers, but the way something should learn, it's not so easy to take out the America, America like that. Not by a long shot. Let's spread the word. God bless America. Enclave survivors past expeditions far arrived to join. I kind of like this one. Hey, put a power, look at that. I would love more daily army XP. But I know I'm going to need this political power. We are slowly becoming more and more purists, which is what we want. I do want more political power, though. God dang it. Mm, the daily elite support's not bad. That's the way we want to go. Uh, what are we done here? Force the reformer? No. Oh, definitely not. Political power gain, I like that. Daily elite support, resistance growth. Resistance and target goes down by a lot. I love it. We get points. Oh, oh, seven, three. This is not bad, too. Passive caps income, more stability, a little more political power. I like that, too. Ed E. R. Fox. Division attack is nice. Definitely not this one. Defense is okay. Reorganized remnants. Uh, that's obviously a benefit to us. And you guys are normal. These guys. That's fine. Great. And what do we have here? Of course, stability would be nice. This costs five stability for all that. Uh, you know what? We're going to work on stability first. But it's not more political power. Stability, it has too many benefits that we just have to take. It gives more political power, factory output, caps, income, resistance, circuit goes down. Our old allies. For the rig's destruction, uh, we contracted uh, with one of the new Reno fa crime families, the Salvatores, trading drugs for weapons. While it was a time honored tradition, the family had been kicked out in Reno due to the plot being uncovered. Even plasma rifles can't stop a mob of angry thugs and mob enforcers. They've been living on the new Reno outskirts, while the Salvatores himself have been headed north to outrun Mr. Bishop. Many of those he once employed are now desperate for protection, and we can use that to our advantage, bolstering our numbers and diverting the more scientifically minded ones to work on lesser projects, freeing up our best for more important research. Bring them in. Distribute them among the teams. Keep them under guard. And muzzle them. Uh, you have to go with this one. I think I chose this one last. I should probably bring them in. We were working with them before. I can't turn down a research slot. I just can't. Like, how, how can you do that? Well, I guess for role-playing purposes, I suppose, but still. Um, we probably won't start working on this. Yeah. Shadow Jack Churchill is absolutely inspirational. And he's got heavy special forces. He's a pain train. We'll do that for now. Our president? Hey, military heritage. Very nice. What is military heritage? That's cybernetics. Tech levels. Nice. On the top right. Oh, okay. So it unlocks all this stuff here. Oh, past victories. That's nice. Our president. We've made our choice, and the choice will change the future of the Enclave, and if we're successful, America. But who really is the man we elected? That's a good question. Sergeant Dorn is well respected by both the former and purest faction. 
Um, nonetheless, neither see him as a viable president of their own candidates. The Purists selected Franklin Anderson as a candidate, while the reformers are led by Douglas Granham. The Purists of Purists faction is advantage, but the support of the Sarge will still tip the scales in favor of the reformers. Look, look, look at that, our president. Anderson's past. Dr. Dr. Franklin Anderson is uh, a former member of the Enclave's Chemical Corps and current Enclave president. Formerly involved in uh, several secret projects during the presidency of Dick Richardson, notably the FAV experiments of Mariposa and the creation of Frank Hergan. Uh, he seeks to finish what he and his colleagues started four decades ago, the eradication of the mutant menace to, that dares to tread upon American soil. Purity. Of course we have to go purity. Even after all the setbacks, her vision for the return of the true humanity has not wavered. In fact, most of the weak-minded and defeatists have already left her midst. We'll purify the mutants from this world and reclaim her beloved homeland at any cost. Uh, Dr. Anderson, or Dr. Franklin Anderson, uh, as a former member of the Chemical Corps, the good doctors recently escaped from 30 years of imprisonment and servitude as a first a non person prisoner in Shady Sands and Darkest Hole. Then a slave to the tribe and a slave to New Reno. During his return to freedom, he has championed the ideals of the Enclave of Old, purity, supremacy, and the reestablishment of America. Firmly involved in several secret projects during the presidency of Dick Richardson, notably the FEV experiments of Mariposa and the creation of Frank Hurrigan, he seeks to finish what he and his colleagues started four decades ago. The eradication of the mutant menace that dares to tread upon American soil. When he was a young scientist, he distinguished himself as he stared down a rampaging Frank Horrigan until he could be subdued, unbreakable will. While the tranquilizer shine at Frank Horrigan, while also taking their toll, none can deny that the towering beast of a man stopped his rampage when faced with the young scientist staring back at him without a hint of fear. So out of test subjects for the chemical corps of the mainland, respected by soldiers. Most scientists leave the dirty work to the soldiers, but Anderson often accompanied them to the mainland, sharing in the company and dangers. Pioneered a new composition of the common stem pack via self-testing, respected by scientists. True devotion to science is measured in sacrifice, as man's risk inspires any scientist. I like the stability, but you can always get more. I like this one, though, too. It's unbreakable. I like being respected, though. That sounds like fun. Sold into slavery after decades of NCR imprisonment. Anderson was forgotten about. He was one of the many undocumented prisoners in the NCR bureaucracy. Moved from prison to prison until eventually enterprising warden sold him and other unmarked prisoners into slavery to Kimalt Station or the 80s. Oh, can you imagine we go to war with the 80s, like, immediately? They have a trade node, too. If you get, like, pair drop on them, that might work. You know what? I would always choose this one. We'll go with the 80s. Anderson's escape. While a slave, Anderson was kept from the most physical labor due to his knowledge of chemistry. Able to turn rudimentary scavenge items into poisons and bombs, it was even useful by his captors years later. When they started taking a stolen Anderson, they decided to bring him to New Reno. Uh, hoping that Mordinos would be interested in an old but chemically gifted slave. Much to the surprise, when the party near Nurino, he organized the other slaves into an uprising. Oh, inspiring! Killed his captors and sleep using a gas. Resourceful. I would, do not understand why you would not take inspiring. I, I, I kind of want to do resourceful just for the challenge of it, but... Um, like I said, I want a power trip, so... He's inspiring, of course he is. He's our guy. Of course, we will need to purge the opposition. There are many in our midst who do not share our vision for the future. They must be dealt with. And Sierra Armor Depot. The Sierra Armor Depots remain relatively unlooted thanks to automated defenses. They should respond to military access codes, leaving us free to access the unspoiled lower levels of the depot to set up our new base of operations. Yeah, pretty much. What that guy said. Damaging the surface. The intervening years have left Sierra Depot a desolate ruin. Now that we have the manpower, we should force our, focus our initial efforts on getting the top in ready condition. Cornerstone of the Enclave, I am deeply humbled that all of you have put your continued faith in me as President of the easy United States. Perhaps my old heart can go on a few more years and continue to deliver us from the evils of the mutant. Anderson addressed the assembled members of the Enclave, confident in the future of the Enclave, the future of America, and the future of the human race. Richardson was a kind soul, a gentle soul, but he was too lenient on the mutant, too generous. He only wished to cure them, to end their suffering. We see how this turned out. Our gracious hand was extended to those who walls, wallowed on the surface in the mainland, and nearly killed the very dream of America and its inhabitants. I respected Richardson, and to this day look, took his words for guidance, however. We're passing through one of the greatest revolutions in the annals of the world, in the history of our race. We need to take up the laser, the plasma, and the vertebrae, to lay low as it exists amongst us the proper status of the mutant in our form of civilization. Our nation rests upon the great tooth that mutant is not equal to the mankind. The slavery and subordination is a natural normal condition. This, our enclave, last nation of the human world, based upon this great physical, phys physio uh, philosophical, and moral truth. In point of material wealth and resources, the mutant greatly outnumbers us, and in terms of skill, science, and determination, we greatly advance are, are in advance of them. 
Mankind will not suffer this indignation, we, this upset to the natural laws of the world. The future belongs entirely to us, not to the medium, but to Americans. And nothing will take that away from us. Not now, not ever. Not tomorrow, not, not ever. It belongs entirely to us. Nice. Um, control a small speech. Elites and intellectuals. Uh, intellectuals, huh? This is where command power comes in. Work, work conditions. Weekly war support for that? Yeah, that's worth doing now. Um, what else we got here? Navarro veterans. If we have time, we could rapidly ac accelerate that, but we got a lot of Uncle Phelan's firearms and laser emporium. Ballistics? Well, we're not going to go with the ballistics. We're definitely going to go uh, with energy weapons of some sort. It's not bad to do here. Motivated by vengeance. It's not bad. Unorganized engineers. That sucks. Uncle F officers are very good, too. Uh, politically connected is not bad, but eventually that won't matter. Unbreakable well. Peace through pl plenty? I like this one a lot. Uh, how much should we get? You know what? I don't mind being a little corrupt. That's fine. Nothing certain in life but death and taxes. And America survives certain death, which leads only to the latter. As part of Anderson's sweeping reforms of the enclave, the old command economy, the oil rig is being done away with. America is coming back from the brink, but its soldiers and scientists cannot operate in revenge and patriotic forever alone. No. From the days of L.A. Forge, America has always run out of money, and enclave scientists have gotten the car cement up and running soon. Refurbished American dollars will be flowing through the economy once again, and any pre-war dollars found can be turned in for an equal amount of new print. Everyone's getting a $600 stimulus. Replace bottle caps with U.S. dollar. Nice. Oh. Well, I guess we get, get better at consumer goods, I guess. Why would we abandon the money that made America? Disloyalty. Receiving reports of an enclave officer openly disputing our leadership, going as far as to claim that the recent elections were fraudulent. Run up the officer and everyone involved with him. Find the man and make an example of him. We have more important matters to attend to. I don't want to lose any more manpower, really. Because we are going to need every single man we have. Probably. Might go really well, but still. Given it time and the extra political power, that might be really nice. I'm going to go with this one. Fine. First. Because we can start working on... Stuff like that. That's not bad. Air XP? How about daily army XP, though? 250 is a lot. Intellectual support? Nope. Daily intellectual support? That's really bad. Purge opposition. Mm. That's not bad, too. Research speed, too. I might actually come down here and do this one for even more political power. Start working on it even faster. That'd be nice. Is there anything else we do down here? Hold a small speech. More elites. Work on stability? Yeah, I'll work on more stability first. Ah, here we go. Okay, radio would be nice. The last Americans, of course. Navarro states now a core of us. Uh, what is it? Okay, Sigma. Reclaim the United States of America. Suit me in problems. If you take Nerino. With morale improving, it's time to look outwards and prepare the liberation of the mutant occupied territories surrounding us. Many of which are still seeing a military equipment caches of indispensable value to our goals. We'll begin with Nerino, our old hiding place. More than 50% war support at the ultimatum. Our eyes fall on an anomaly in the waste, and an advanced city built out of pre-war vaults. If they are as civilized as they seem, it may be worth attempting to reason with them. Chaos in the Navarro uh, territories. I think I put this on historical as well. Could be wrong, but I think we're on historical. We're going to focus on uh, war support as well. More than five cities, huh? Good. And then the last Americans file the mutants. Ooh. That's up all very good. Purge mutants. Could remember the rig. That would be very very benef very beneficial. Uncle Ed Radio, though, we can rebuild the most powerful radio beacons of the Sierra Armor Depot, which allows a broadcaster signal across the wasteland. This will be invaluable for organizing long distance expeditions, as well as reaching any remnants still loyal to the Enclave. 
I'm gonna start choosing that one too. Or just appearances. We're gonna wait for that. And whatever gets us more war support too. More military factories, more cities in five. So we definitely have to go to war. Should probably stop training your guys here. You guys are just gonna hang out. You guys are just gonna go to town and plow through these guys. Or, you know what? What if we do this first? Can we just straight up annex them? That'd be cool. Two front of war we do. Rumors of a half mutant. Rumors have begun spreading that a respected administrator of our hearts is a uh, half mutant. Like many of your younger personnel, he was born years after the fall of Navarro to a surviving enclave soldier and a mysteriously absent mother. Now, these allegations are true, he may be a serious risk for security. No compromise, no mercy. They're just rumors. Yeah, no compromise, no mercy. What are you talking about? I really wonder if we can get the ultimatum, because I've never been able to take this one. Never. Contact the remnants. Allows you to spend political power to call home to destroy enclave remnants as manpower. That'd be pretty good to do. Two divisions return. Reorganize them. Recruitable population. Add enclave military 20%. Mariposa expedition. Open the vaults. Mexican efficiency. Robotic manufacturing. Remember the rig, four decades ago, our base of operations were sabotaged. Many of our old guard lost comrades and family in the ensuing explosion. The act has gone unavenged in decades since, but we've not forgotten. Department of War. What is this? Oh, wait, why isn't it progressing? Oh, they actually did that, huh? Darn it. Can I... We actually train divisions, nice, we don't need these. Militia, we don't need robots. Hmm. You know what, if that's the case, we've got six days here left. Gotta wait for that enclave radio. In the meantime, actually, what do we have here? Uh, popularity of elites, more army XP. Get that stability. Get this one too. Nice. Does can we use army speed for anything else here? Use yeah, scavenging program, of course. Maybe not. I don't want to look that. Battle of New Reno. Chaos was the Battle of New Reno is coming to a close, the Enclave. We start to enforce order on the city. Fighting still continues throughout the city. It's believed that the city will be back in normal in a few days. We heard the stories. Uh, it, uh, but the place is worse than any of them. I've seemed to be. Bicycles? Sure, why not? And there they go. Simple, easy, and effective. The lawless wasteland, a disaster on the oil rig. The wasteland remains populated by freaks and mutants who pervert all that humanity holds dear. Given the few remaining humans who hold the Uncle's cause, it's difficult to properly subjugate the monsters. Um, we can set several different occupation policies, leading to one to exploit resources, and the other which lets us dismantle the circle of factories and relocate them to see our armor depot via decision. How to relocate factories? Oh, I understand how to deal with them. If our occupation policy is set to dismantle factories, we can transfer factories back to the Sierra Army Depot, of course. We're running out of facilities eventually, so we may be forced to pursue other alternatives. Note that resistance increases. Say so far from our control, become part of the Lawless Wasteland, the natural state of mutants. How do we reclaim the Lawless Wasteland? The resistance rises at 25%, a city controlled by the Enclave, it will revert back to the Lawless Wasteland. While we can move through the Lawless Wasteland, we cannot exploit it yet. So many changes we recover pre-war robotic technology, and we deploy a garrison of the state. We can control it, but we'll need to make sure we can hold on to it or it will revert to Lawless Wasteland. Oh, God, I hate mutants.
So we need more war spark fast. So we'll probably do remember the rig next. I mean, there's more political power, which is nice. Sure, why not? Cedar. It's a 40 day focus to get to there. You unlock this one. Pre war installations. You get more war support this way, too. Oh, well, let's at least remember the reg next. Okay, I'm getting a slightly more political power now as well. Slay the locals. That's what these are good. Well, this can we at least get some compliance for now. Yeah, I'll take a to take Vault City. Our eyes fall on the phenomenon in the wasteland, an advanced city built out of pre-war vault. Nonetheless, we should act with prejudice and subject the city to us by force. Oh, we need labor. Alone is fine, whatever. Deal with the Van Graffs. Make a deal with the Van Graffs. Rousing speech. Hmm. for now. Hey, look at that. We actually need that political power, huh? Or 200 American dollars, which we definitely don't have. Oh, God. And, uh, we're saved. Oof. 55%, good. We could do that one hopefully soon, eventually. Uh, we can take Vault City. Ransack the labs. Homecoming. Then we could purify the city. Honorary humans. I'd have to go with purify the city. Repairing this. A full control of Gecko. Last Americans. Support goes up faster. This would be really interesting. Genocidal. I want to do that one next, but I gotta grab Daily Army XP. Gordon of Gecko selected in Vault City. Oh wow, Ghoul in Vault City? They definitely gotta go. The convoy equipment's nice. 
Go ahead and do this one anyways, whatever. Weapon mount production. Reclamation authority, nice. But I'm gonna wait for that stuff later. Hundred political power for more stability is nice. Take Wall City. We're gonna the troops. Mariposa. Clearing out the natives. The Modoc County military cash. The military surplus. Deal with the Yakuza. Lose war support. Use Garth City. Ransack the labs. Well, on last is Muti Hunt. It appears that one of our vertebrate assault teams is going out of the way to inflict collateral damage on mutants during the patrols, going as far as tallying a count on the vertebrate. While other actions could risk operational security that enclave, punishing them might prove an unpopular move considering our current stance of mutants. Make an example of them. Threatening court martial. Boys will be boys. Inspiring address of soldiers personally. That's gonna happen again. NCR specialization goes up. Inspiring. Disloyalty. Oh, we're receiving reports of an enclave officer openly disputing. <coughs> Excuse me, our leadership. Going as far as loudly claiming that the recent elections were fraudulent. Making sure of finding and punishing the man. Three more born matters to attend to. There you go. The surface. Four army bases, two divisions of light robots. Uh, that's pretty good too. Far below. Evacuating. Or excavating. Restore the reactor. Lose power armor cap, of course. Nice. What else we got here? A lot of stuff we can't do yet. Okay, cool. Well, last Americans, maybe. Hello, America. This is President Anderson speaking. I want to share with you a few words that have brought me comfort in these trying months. Words of courage, determination, and wisdom. Thoughts for the days, if you will. Because right now, we're 64%. Not bad. Keep it going. Kind of just want to plow through our enemies. Happy October, everybody. What treatments? No goals. Like, bro, seriously? Goals? You get what you deserve. Where are you going, son? Could get more weekly war support or we can do military exercises. Robots. Beautiful. Last Americans, good. Kill the mutants. Division attack 2%. Stability and more political power. 
Defile the mutant. I'd love to file him, but purge opposition. We need more than 80% support, so let's take, we're getting there. But I really want to do Department of War. Uh, while, the reg, reg, the, while on the reg, the Department of the Army was all that was needed. As their operations expand, we'll need more than an army. From this day forward, America is at war. Good. Cafeteria incident. Mr. Disturbing photographs been circulating among the cafeteria staff. Involving one of the staff members intentionally hang, uh, handling ingredients inappropriately. Like showing them and finding punishment. One important matter to attend to. Yeah, for that one. Do I really care? No, honestly, no, I don't. Seventy-five. Is there anything for five percent? Uh, Rangers appearances. No private or officials. Eh, go ahead, do that one. Why not? We got one more focus to take before we do that next one. That was project. Gene therapy. Division attack thirty percent. Strategic omnipotence. Combat conditioning. Cybernetic enhancements. Army Air Corps. Robots, Servitors, Colorado Expedition, Break the Brotherhood, well, let's go with Got the Surface. End of Vault City. After bitter fighting over Vault City, starting to cease. The Enclave is starting to clean up what's left of Vault City, while the residents are unsure what to expect from that or new overlords. As the Enclave takes the treasure of the vault to Thier Armor Depot, who would have thought such a city could be ever be taken? I can't stand much more, of course. Go and grab that there, Gecko. This capped at negative forty-one percent to ten percent, huh? Chance resistance activity. It's pretty gosh darn low. Dude, to gear some fulfillment, huh? Oh, where are we at with this? 75%. Smoke signal's good. Dismantle the ransack the labs. Medical technology is of immeasurable value to a purpose due to low numbers compared to the mutants. 
The labs of Vault City have many pre-war medical technologies as well as their own advancements. Furthermore, the advanced state of the city compared to the rest of the Waste have given rise to the notion that we may be dealing with more than degenerative mutants in this case. Strike the surface. Our engineers are set to work on the surface, clearing out much of the rubble, debris, and bodies. While we can't confirm whose bodies those were, we can determine the oldest ones and bury them with full military honors. Any any others will put into Golgotha. However, the engineers only have enough manpower to work on one project, either the airstrip or the robot defenses. That's for sure, Will Skies. Build the airstrip. Opening the old hangars. The hangars of the depot have been closed for well over 200 years. I gotta cut them with plasma cutters just to gain access. Um, inside, however, was something none of us were expecting an entire flight of VBU 01 vertebrates with the pre war model of the Enclave Workhorse. Well, not as well armed as a VBU 02 gunship, or having as large capacities as a VB 02 transport, the VB 01 is a versatile utility platform that can perform a variety of functions on the battlefield that the other two find difficulty in accomplishing. We have found technical manuals and flight instructions, allowing us to train a new generation of Army pilots. Sadly, the VBs of 01s are found in a sorry condition, and many seem to have been cannibalized for parts, thankfully. Technicians are looking over them, and sure that it is possible to reproduce these aircraft using the facilities here at the depot. Begin production immediately. Nice. Well, that's the case. Can we purge the opposition? More than 80% support. So, at 77.59%. Lose a little bit of stability, uh, but that doesn't give us 3% more. All it does is... Hmm, crack down. That'd be nice. Hmm. Still gotta wait a little longer. So be it. Uh, restore this. Expand from below. We're gonna ransack the labs. Purify the city. Honorary humans. As much as I want a core. Purify it. We have the city in our hands. We can begin cleaning it of the mutant menace, leaving only those few mutants enough to be considered humans. Heck yeah. Disable. Hey, there's another trade note, which is nice. Long march, of course. And historical firearms. There you go. Well, I'll hold a small speech. So now we're over 80%. Uh, fantastic. Happy January. Or Happy New Year, really. Oops. Let's see, selection. I'm going to go with this. And then what else? It's a little ahead of time. Just gliders, because you can. But, of course, we're going to purge the opposition. Like I said, there's many in our midst. We're going to share a vision for the future. They must be dealt with. So, it takes 60 days. My God. So... The Dwemer Freeman guy, Colonel David David Stevenson, Lieutenant Scott Blair, Thomas Rumi Rim, are executed in false charges. This will get point two more political power, two point five percent more division organization, better division recovery rate, better stability. But homecoming, Ball City, its corresponding suburb of Courtyard, was once home to many of the uncle of refugees who survived in borrow. And was here many made their home. The elderly settled here, and the next generation grew up in these streets, and the next generation have been friends with many of the other city children. Yet, however, they turned out as fellow citizens, but as conquerors, gazing over the former comrades from behind the eyes of power armor. Yet within each one nested the flame of the old world, ignited by President Anderson, and it was their duty, no, their destiny to bring the torch of the old world to the city. Having grown from Valde, it was a control vault in one of the most advanced cities in the American wasteland. It serves only right that the city be made use by the American government. For who else was there to be used for? Lynette, the security, uh, city, security, no. They may have been fellow citizens and leaders once, but now they're nothing more than half mutants who tried, who need to be reminded of their place, and that sedition secession from the U.S. government was just as illegal as mutation. Guns get all weapons. Mutants have no rights to the Second Amendment. The purpose of robots. We got a lot of work ahead of us. Robots, huh? Yeah, that's right. Mutants have no rights to the Second Amendment. That just makes sense. Go to signals, nice. Uh, do some odd days. Nice. And I purge the opposition, of course. I'm going to purify the city, too. So, if you're going to do this one, please go ahead. 
It's not bad. Army fuel consumption goes down, which is good, but still. Anything for Elko Posse? Modoc County. This is the only thing separating us from the 80s. Which I do want to go to war with the 80s as fast as possible, actually. You know what, I'm going to spend it, because I want to go to war with them fast. And see how good our power armor will stand up to them. Actually, why don't I just waste command power on that guy? We're going to kill him anyways. Whatever. Alright. <clears throat> A couple more. Uh, do not fear the mutant. Advanced power armor. Well, these are all nice. We don't have to do them yet. Vision recovery rate. I kind of want to defile the mutant next. It pains my heart to see mutants living in luxury while their betters rot in squalor. I'll remind them that there is no place for them in this world aside under our boot heel. Boot heel. Oh, we can just get, straight up go to war with the NCR if we want to. God bless the Enclave eventually, someday. Uh, I don't need that one yet. Letters are nice. The Navy. Expand the Army. Hope they're restored. Motorized, salt tanks, airborne warfare, and my penalty, supply grace, extra paratrooper with supply grace. We're gonna need that one later on. Vertebra combat units, vertebra power armor, mobile bases, holy shnikes. Douglas Grant deserts. Grant's taken a few of his most devoted supported and deserted the Enclave and Vertebra last night. Support for the formers of Duenable with their disappearance of the leader. Get rid of them. As it should be. As it should be. Urge the opposition. Uh, better far below. The Great War, earthquakes in the passage of time, did a number on the depot's lowest levels. Bear down their lost computer banks and storage areas that are vital to our efforts. Good. Pre war installations. Pre war, the U.S. had massive installations that assisted in military endeavors. Where the Western could try and occupy them. Uh, only the Uncle can restore our pre war bases to full glory. That's we're done with that. Nice. Purified city, we have to. Rotten up from the inside out. Gauss weaponry, yes, please. Facilities of the wasteland. The first glances it may fool the would be prospect or scavenger, but if there's one thing the wasteland isn't, it's empty. Every mangled mass of steel has a story to tell, and a lot of stories litter the ruins of North America. Many pre war military installations lie within a preview, but there are some places that may be left behind if one doesn't have a high enough perception. There are countless research facilities, secret pre-war bases, and other strategically valuable locations. They'll be all of great use to the Enclave, which are lost to the sands of time. Although our inclement political situation did not previously allow us to properly seek out or develop these facilities, the time has fortunately passed. Scouts and archaeologists now stand at the ready to find these locations, with your approval, of course. Send them out to find our new facilities. Just tell them to be wary of old world blues. Unlocks the ability to restore facilities throughout the wasteland. As if we don't have enough ruins to sift through, we'll not have the ability to restore facilities through the wasteland. Why would we choose this one? Of course we'll do this one. So at this point, I think we should really start focusing on getting as much power armor as possible because we're going to need quite a few divisions. And you know what? I don't know why I'm making this Enclave power armor. We need these ones. So as much as I like these, these ones are more important because they're even though they're not as thick, these actually be more important because we need to drop as many possible um, divisions onto the NCR as possible. So that's why we're going to need so many of these guys. Which I might actually convert some of you guys to... Be smaller so we can make more. There we go. There we go. I can be inspirational. That'd be nice. Also take over Petro Chico. More manpower. Two divisions of Uncle and veterans. We want to wait until we're done. Three veteran division. Three field veterans decision uses. Wait until we're completely done so we can get even more of that. Um. It's not bad. Boost power armor cap, which is good. Reorganize engineers, which is also very good. Way more political power. Extend the beacons. Hmm. Kill the mutant. I do like to file the mutants next. I do like to file things here. You know what? You let me know. Should we do aggressive conditioning? Or should we do gene therapy? Either one. That's good. Second's okay. Well, it makes sense what we want. But, but I do like aggressive conditioning. Should we do combat conditioning? as well, or should we do strategic on the potence? Which is not bad. I kind of prefer combat conditioning, but let me know in the comments below which route you think we should take. I guess, could, I guess we should expand the army. Pre-war America had the largest army on the planet, but the Great War and the destruction of the rig has left it to show off its former self. Time to rectify that, of course. Flexibility of movement. 
Flexibility command. Well, we're going to use so fight supporting units. Adaptive chain command. Flexibility movement. Attacking on the move requires great discipline, but gain superiority in most engagements. Flexibility command. Close integration support and frontline units. As well as more flexible command structures allow our units to operate more effectively in the field. So are we going to use more uh, divisions that have support weeks and whatnot? That seems like maybe I want to go with that route for the now. Something I usually don't choose. Uh, benefits immediately? No. We lose less soldiers though, which would be good. Better reinforce rate and whatnot. Obviously, I, like, I do generally prefer this one to get better breakthrough, less organization loss and moving, more speed. But it doesn't actually help us out too much in combat, unless it's in, except for breakthrough, really. I want to do flexibility command. We're going to try that route for this campaign. Is it wrong? It might be, but whatever. No, we're good. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. If anything, just going to do that one. That's fine. It's a lot of days ahead of time, but whatever. I don't think I was really going to notice too much. Go and make them, but not really. That'd be nice. We're gonna bribe the NCR next. Go to war with Echo Posse. Last special forces. I think we're thinking about heavy special forces, really. Restore the reactor. That'd be nice. More war support would be good too. We can repair this too. Implant technology is very good too. Yeah. Clear out the natives. The north are several tribes that are devoted ab human mutants who squat upon resources. And more importantly, American soil, it's time to re eradicate this blight and repairing the power plant. In their ignorance, the people of Walt City were never capable of restoring their nearby power plant to its full potential. With the city fully full secure, we can send our engineers to complete this task. But I think I might just end it there. If you enjoyed the video, though, please consider leaving a like. Subscribe if you're new. Check out my Discord link in the description below, and I will see you tomorrow. As uh, we will be at war with the Elko Posse, the 80s, and maybe the NCR. Thanks for watching. Have a great rest of your day.